So we have this, this is what we're doing yesterday. I mean, this is from the finished version, but we have um, a call where we're able to get the agents. And remember, we're kind of also grabbing the agents and how many unsold properties they've had. Then from there, we can select the buyers. And then from there, um, we can select, once we select the buyer, we'll show um, the city, the square footage, and the price of that buyer's desired properties. So we didn't get that done with the front end. We just got the back end done. So what we could look at is to kind of just review. We could go maybe go look at our get history. You know, we kind of have these, um, this, this unsold homes for our agent. That was the first call to get um, all of the agents, but also kind of grab how many unsold homes they've had. We set up that route. We have um, in our buyer, this is the API call to grab all the buyers properties that match their max price and their desired cities. Um, if we look at our routes, so we've created a uh, index for our agents. That's gonna grab all of our agents. The show's gonna grab all the agents buyers. And then the buyer is going to show all the properties. So we could go just to review, um, test out these routes. So we go to localhost 3001. So we have our agents API um, call that grabs our agent information with the unsold properties. We should be able to also pull off an agent which gives us um, all the agents, buyers, that the buyers that belong to that agent. And then we should be able to also do buyers. Let's make sure I grab one. Like we have ID 21. So if I do buyers and then the ID of the buyer, that's going to give me the properties that match the buyer's cities and price range. So what we need to do is we don't have any of the front end set up, so we want to create a drop down, and then another drop down, and then grab a lot of these. So, so why some of these are blank is some of these um, buyers don't have anything that match. So maybe if, if that case pops up, we should maybe throw something in our UI that says, hey, no properties match for this buyer. Cool. So that's what we're gonna do here. So um, that is gonna be this buyer's front end. So if this was like a stand-up meeting, you know, I would say something like, oh, yesterday, um, yesterday we got the city's back end, we got the city's features done, both the front end and the back end. And we also got the back end done with our, you know, find home or our buyer's page. And today we're going to work on the front end for the buyers. And I think that's probably a good enough chunk of work for today. We might not I think with the charting stuff, I might move that charting stuff to a different lecture so we can spend a little more time with charts. We'll see if we get there or not. But let's um, go ahead and just focus on this buyer's front end. I'm just going to copy kind of one of these descriptions for our basic front end. So here, here's kind of the, you know, once again, the process, you know, we're going to set up the page, we're going to do our Axios calls, 
if we need to, we'll figure out the UI. I don't know if we'll need to do this. And I don't, we'll see if we need to normalize the data. So we'll kind of, kind of use this as a rough blueprint of the things we want to do with this feature. But let's move this to in progress. So, go ahead and close that all out. So, starting out, what I might want to do is like a get status. Because I do have a change, and that's, I was doing that demo JS, the sort in this project, which is fine. So, I can just go ahead and commit this. just to get my get up to date. So yeah, if I was starting out, you know, it's the day I would, since I'm starting a new ticket, I'm going to just pull from master. You know, so maybe someone on my team made a change, just want to get up to date. Then I'm going to do a get checkout dash B, and then I can do whatever feature it's going to be. Now I can start coding. So let's just get our um, page set up. Call this buyers or just to match Neo. I'm going to call this find homes. Js. Just get this set up with the React Router. Sort default. You go add this to my nav bar, so to my layout. And then Cool, so there's my link. So now I want to add that to my app.js. Our tomes. I find tomes. So yeah, we've added in my app.js, we just added the route for that. Just added a basic component and added that link. So there is, that's all set up. Now I could, if I wanted to, I could add all this stuff since it's working. Like 
I just really should do that really quick. <clears throat> okay. Get commit. I'm just going to do this real quick. All right. Okay, so next thing we want to do, I would say would be to, I mean, we could go ahead and start grabbing the data. So let's grab our use state hook and our use effect hook. So when we first load this page, we want to grab the agents. It's not a call, it's just a function. So there's my use effect. I can say get agents. Constant agents. And we can is going to be my Axios call, so I'm going to make this async response equal await. It's going to be our Axios dot get slash API slash agents. Come in here and create some state for agents, const agents. and set agents. Set this to, uh, ah, yeah, I'll set that to an FD array for now. And then I can go ahead and set agents to res.data. Let's just do this for now. Let's do a JSON dot stringify agents. Let's see if that's working. So there's my agents. But I want to convert that into a um, to a drop down. What's an ant design? What do they call the select? I believe. Oh, cool. I have a little search too. Uh, 
Um, I'm gonna just, yeah, let's take this select box again. Let's import these, import select, and then grab the option from the select. And let's just take this whole thing. I don't know what this filter option is doing. Okay. Let's go ahead and grab these. Maybe we'll use this on search and on change. We'll definitely use the on change. So I'm just going to copy and paste these inside of here. Okay. So if I look at my, now I refresh. Oh, here's my select the person. That's how this is like letting me type something in, which is kind of cool. So I can like start to type it in and it'll like match. So if I probably have like Lucy and like Luke. I type in like L, might find both of those, like Lucy and Luke. <clears throat> cool. And it looks like it also has a, so when I start searching, it has a callback for that. So A, B, so it's like searching. Whenever I click something, it's calling that on search callback. And then I also have the on change. So when I actually select something, it tells me that. I'm getting a warning because I have <clears throat> two um, options with the same key, which would probably be really bad with, or the same value, it's probably going to, break stuff, so I'll change that. <clears throat> yeah, so I could probably also throw in a loading right here. So I could do our spinner again. So here's, um, so we kind of figured, like we have the select working, but here's the data we're getting back. So we kind of need to think about how do we convert this data to the format that AMP Design wants it. So I think when I select an agent, or sorry, yeah, when I select an agent, what do you think I'm going to want to log as the value? So what, like what I'm asking here is what do you think the value should be? Maybe like agent ID. Yeah, I think the ID is, is exactly what we want because we're going to need the ID for the next Axios call. Because when we do an on change, you know, Axios call to get agents buyers. So <clears throat> I'm going to want to loop over these, throw in the um, ID here. And then for the name, 
I'm just going to want to maybe combine the first and last name. So we could kind of do something maybe like we did with the um, other select we did. So I'm just going to take this out of here. Do this render agent select. Now that and I can get rid of that. Well, let's keep it for now. Um, const render agent select. So for this, we can do an if statement. And yeah, maybe for this one, I will set agents to null. So if we do not have agents, we can just throw in this um, select box with just the loading. Let's return. Just make that self closing. I think we can clean that up a little bit. Just a little thing with JavaScript. Not that it matters. Um, you might see this. If I have an if statement that only has one line, I don't have to have the curly brackets. Not, not a huge deal, but you just might see that. So if we don't have agents, then do our select with the loading. But if we do, we'll probably also just write that on the line. If we do, then we want to return. Let me grab my select again. this if we do then I'm going to return this select box agent option filter prop I'm not sure what this let's leave that here I would maybe need to go look at the documentation to see what this is actually doing but let's um, leave that there for now so I'll say select an agent, get rid of these options. And here we can do our agents.map, go through each agent and return the option. Give it a key. It's going to be the agent.id. Let's give it the value that we also want to be the agent.id. And then what was it? It was the, oh, I guess I need to not have this be a self closing one. And then inside of here, we can just do the agent. First name and the agent first underscore name and agent dot last underscore name. I guess I gotta interpolate this. Do you need a comma there in between those? Um, I 
What do I need? What, um, I need, I want to interpolate this. There, that's what I need. Just need to put my interpolation in the right spot. So the, the first curly bracket is saying, hey, I want to write JavaScript. Then I do my interpolation. And then I have two variables. So I want to do um, interpolate first name, then give it a space, and then interpolate last name. All right, so I can save that. Select an agent, there's my agents. When I click on one, it should give me the ID. Cool. I wonder if, and then yeah, we also have like this search. So if I type in K, it's gonna filter out all the Ks. <clears throat> cool, so now I can get rid of that stringify. Maybe get, if they have a label for selects. It's an H1 or like an H4 right here. And then, yeah, the, oh, got rid of the wrong one. Render agent select. <clears throat> I might also want to get this select. Seems to be like shrinking when I type. Let's see if I, if I give this a width, if that fixes it. 300 pixels. <clears throat> so it doesn't shrink when I start typing. Is that doing that? Hmm. Let's give it a style. Let's try this. Width equals pixels. Okay, that looks a little better. Maybe I don't need it to be that big, but cool. <clears throat> Another thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is, I mean, these, these logs were helpful just to kind of see how these were working, but I don't really need, need those logs because they're just gonna mess up my console or make it, Dirty. So now I can do my Axios call. So the next piece of data I'm going to need is some buyers. Do a similar thing here. So on change here, I'm going to do a let fonts equal axios dot get. This is my API slash agents. And then I give it the ID of the agent. So that's going to be the value. This is going to be a weight. 
So here's kind of like the uh, function syntax. It's a little different than the arrow function. So if I want to do make this one async, I throw the async right there. So a async function on change value. So we're kind of mix and matching some how we write functions, but it's a good little practice. Then from here, I can set my buyers to res dot data. Then maybe here I can do a JSON dot stringify um, my buyers. Right now it's null. So I don't have any buyers because I haven't selected an agent. So let's go ahead and select an agent. And there we go. There's the agent's buyers. So now I can maybe do something like this, render buyer select. But for this one, I'm only gonna render this. I mean, oh, well, let's see. Let's just render this for now and kind of do this in here. So for this one, I can just go ahead and copy this. Um, render agent select, but I'll just switch this to buyer select. So if we don't have agents, let's maybe just return a select. Then I'm gonna do another check. If we don't have buyers, then we're gonna, return a select that is loading. Have this one select the buyer. So for this one, <clears throat> then we can switch that to buyers.map. That's actually probably going to work if I leave that as A, because my buyer has an ID. My buyer also has a first and last name. So we could leave that like that for now. Maybe we'll, we'll switch that up in a second, but <clears throat> let's do this. But then we're going to need to, for this on change and on search, we don't want this to go to... Um, this on change we want this to go to a different on change so we could do like on buyer change maybe i'll just not have to search for this one so then i could do my i'm just going to copy this one I call this on buyer change Let's comment out this for now, and then we'll just console.log value. <clears throat> and I'm going to get rid of this. Okay, so let's refresh. So well, something I don't wanna see right here that I'm like, if you can tell this has a loader, I'm kind of not expecting that. I was kind of expecting that to just be a blank drop down. but we'll, we'll look at that in one second. 
So we have to find homes, so we should be able to select an agent. And now we should be able to select the buyer. And then we're logging the ID. So let's get rid of this stringify JSON. Just clean this up, refresh. Let's also go ahead and put on this other one that does have the width. <clears throat> oh, I need to put the style here. Okay. So that's good, but I don't want this to have the buyers. So let's kind of look at what's going on. If we don't have agents, that should be returning this, right? Let's try something. I don't know why that loader's there. Oh, I called it agent. No, I call it agents. <clears throat> Something I should do. <clears throat> um, oh, wait, no, that, that's right. That should be agents. Um, what is going on here? So if we don't have agents, we should return no agent. I am confused here. I guess this one's really not working either. Oh wait, we do have agents. Because we do agents on mount, duh. Okay. Um, sorry, I have my logic reversed. I'm trying to think here. <clears throat> okay, so why this is loading is because when we do our component did mount, we grab the agents and then we have our agents. So I could get rid of the loading here. That doesn't have any data. I guess that's fine. I guess that works. So we have a, because when I hit refresh, this is just kind of blank, no data. Then I can select an agent and we see that. Cool. <clears throat> I wonder if, um, just, just out of curiosity, data select. Ant design. Customize. Select. Probably a way to do it. I don't want to spend too much time on it. Custom, oh wait, custom drop down. Drop down renderer. Let's just try this. Actually, it looks like a little complicated. Uh, 
Um, so Ant Design will give you, and, and you know, other libraries, they might give you ways to like customize your, uh, this is gonna take forever, but I could probably come in here and let's just make this super simple. Tell them how I want to render the dropdown. So I'm just giving it a component right here. Let's see if that works. Oh wait, this is only for one section. Yeah, so I can actually come in here and tell it how I want to render the drop down. So I probably could like do some logic, you know, if there's not a menu, I could say, hey, no menu, please select agent first. No agent. So, um, yeah, it's, it's one of these things with Ant Design. It's, this is a, like, lot of, con lot of customization you can do with this. So I could come in and create my own little menu. But it's maybe a little beyond this. That, might, that would probably take a while to do that, so. So I don't know off the top of my head how to do that, but they give you like these nice little called like these props drop down render. So just give me a component and I'll render that. We'll kind of skip that for now. So when you're using or when you're deciding like a component library to use, it's kind of like, well, how much functionality do you want? Like I said, like this drop down menu component or the select menu, like. It's pretty, pretty involved. So yeah, search box, custom render. You can add stuff to your drop down, like because it's like you can customize this. Um, so yeah. Let's just keep going. So here's our drop down. We can select an agent, then we can select the buyer. And now, once we have our buyer, we can do our <clears throat> async on buyer change. And just to um, let's do another review since we're kind of mixing and matching some JavaScript in here. Let's do a. Um, asynchronous call without the async function. So I want to do another um, Axios call here, but I'm not going to use the async await syntax. I'm going to use the dot then dot catch. So let's show you how that works. Because um, this is because async await is like an ES7, ES8 feature. It's just it's just relatively new. So you might see code where you're doing an Axios call or you're doing an async call that looks like this. It'd be axios.get. So I still do my Axios call, the API slash, what was it, buyers? And then the ID of the buyer, so that's gonna be value. And then you do this syntax dot then. So response. And there's our callback function and we can do our catch. Is that the error?
So we've talked about this briefly, but let's just do it again. So this is the same thing as doing async await with a try catch block. Inside of here, so the dot then, this is, you know, it was successful. So we could do our set. Well, we need to create some state for this. Say buyers <clears throat> properties set buyer properties. So in our dot then we could set buyer properties to res dot data. And here's our error. So this is where we get alert. The string. So let's see if we can inside of here higher properties. So our buyer properties are null, so we need to select an agent. Then we need to select a buyer. And then there are our buyer properties. <clears throat> so for that one, for this feature, it really wasn't much. Nor I mean, there was a little with normalizing the data to get our data to work with. Um, the select, but it was pretty straightforward. Um, I think we can just leave this as is, as this buyer's property. Um, don't really need to do much with that as far as styling. It's concerned. Any questions on this? Um, let's go ahead, let's take a break. I think for the last part, um, instead of doing the charts, we can briefly talk about, um, cause it is in the Neo notes. What we can do is we can, um, maybe add a lot of data and may maybe do some pagination stuff. So let's take a little break. Then we'll come back. We'll add a ton of data to our database. And then maybe with some of these pages, we'll do some pagination. And if you're wondering what pagination is, it's kind of
kind of this stuff with the table where you maybe only show a limited amount of data. So yeah, let's come back. Let's just call it, what time is it? It's 11.42. Let's just come back at 11.55. And let me I'll put, also push this up to GitHub. So actually, let me just it. I'll push this up to GitHub and merge it to master. So I commit, I push to the branch. Okay, that should be on master now. So we'll see you back at 
All right. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and get started. So just one last thing before lunch um, to talk about is um, pagination. And so let's do this first. Um, I'm going to just do a git checkout master. I'm just going to do this on the master branch. I did push to, I did merge that pull request on GitHub. So I do need to pull down the changes so I can get the find home and the layout changes that we did. But for this feature, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my seeds file and I'm going to change some things. Just going to go ahead and add some more cities. And I'm going to create some more data. So I'm going to do a hundred agents. They're each going to have um, 50 buyers and 50 properties. So now I should, I'm going to have a hundred agents and then I'm going to have, you know, 5,000 buyers and 5,000 properties. I have a little more data to work with. <clears throat> and also, so when I run this, I'm just going to do a reset. Now this seed, this is when, when I'm seeding this, it's gonna take a second. <clears throat> I'm running it, something like that. So I'm gonna stop my server. Running this <clears throat> seed is gonna take a second because I'm creating a lot of entries. So I'll just let that finish. Yeah, all I did to my seeds file, just added some cities. And yeah, just added how many, some more agents. So essentially added a zero to all those times loops. And this is running just Kind of takes a second to create all these into our database. Maybe taking a little longer than expected, but that seems pretty long. Uh, did anyone else's finish? Mine finished. Yeah, I'm already done. Okay. 
I guess, yeah, it just finished. I don't know why that took so long. So yeah, I should be able to step into my call, uh, my console now if I do an agent dot all dot size, you know, I have a hundred agents, property dot all dot size, 5,000, yeah, buyer dot all dot size. So I have you know a little more data in my database. Could start up my server again. Sweet. So yeah, let's say we go like to my cities page now. Cool. Now that's nice. I have that all set up. So you know we're getting the unique cities from our database. So that just works. Now I can like select Salt Lake. And now I have just tons and not tons, but you know, quite a bit of um, properties for that. So not that it's like a huge thing. When I select the city, let me just refresh this. So go back to the cities page. When I select the city, there's, it's kind of a little glitchy. If you notice, you know, it's it's just taking a while for the um, to render. And there's two two kind of bottlenecks. One is your, you know, if you're getting back a lot of data that and your maybe your SQLs calls a little expensive. That can take some time to do the SQL to get all that data. Um, that's probably not it in this case. I think the more the thing that's making it a little glitchy in this case is probably React trying to render all of this stuff. Um, if I go to available, I don't know, you can just see like going to available, like it, you can kind of see it taking a second to load. I don't think it's like really like that bad. Oh man, that's sweet. Like our, and we can see we have like pagination already working. This is more like ant design is, is doing that, but we already have the data loaded. So, so I think we can leave this like this in the, um, in this available page. One thing to note with this available page, we're grabbing all the data up front. And there is a little bit of a consequence of it taking a little longer to render. If you can see that kind of glitch, which I, once again, I don't, at this point with maybe 5,000 things, it's maybe not that bad, but if we had, if we're like Amazon or like maybe Zillow or something, where instead of having, you know, I guess we're trying to render like 3,000 things, if we had like 30,000 things, then maybe we're then going to be talking about a couple seconds. So, and this is kind of happening with our cities. When I select something, it, it does kind of glitch out for a second because it's trying to grab all that data and then it's trying to render it. So with this cities page, let's try to do something. It's, it's not gonna be the exact, si exact same because Ant Design already has the data and they're kind of giving us this UI. But what we're gonna do for this cities page is we're gonna create our own little pagination tab. But the one difference that we're gonna do is we're not going to grab all of the data up front. We're gonna grab the data when we like click on the next button. We're actually gonna do an Axios call. So let's set that up. Um, <clears throat> so this is our cities page. So let's go, first of all, we need to install a gem. And I need to look this up because I can never remember how to spell it. 
So what gem we're going to add here, we're going to add this gem, um, Kaminari. I don't know how I say that. It's a Japanese word. Kaminari. Is that how you spell it? Yeah. So now that I've added a gem, I'm going to stop my server and run bundle to install that gem. I can restart my server. All right, so this is our cities page. Um, Trying to remember where we did that API call. I believe that is in our properties controller where we're getting our cities. So what I'm going to do is, oh, it's, yeah, it's this method right here property by city param city, right? And that is the one that grabs it. So we're gonna do a before action. And what I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna call this set. For now let's only do this on our city method. Boom. So let's find this method set page, set page. So, what this method is going to expect, we're going to set up an instance variable called at page. And we're going to set this equal to params page. Or one. I don't want to show this um, syntax. So this is <clears throat> two ways I could write this um, statement. So with the ternary, I'm checking to say, hey, do I have params page? Is that like defined? If I do use that, if I don't have this page params, then set page equal to one. And this is a the short circuit evaluation to do the same thing. It's saying the same thing at page equals param page. So if this is defined, this is going to be an or statement. So that's true. That's like truthy value. So it doesn't evaluate it further. So it will set that equal to params page. If params page is not defined, you know, uh, Ruby will think that's a falsy value. So it'll go check the second thing, which is one, which is truthy. So it sets that equal to a page. So we only need one of these. Oop. It's kind of want to explain what's, e either one of these would work. Could also do this as an if statement. If params page. If you want to know the terminology, this is a short circuit evaluation. This is a ternary. Of course, 
differences are default. But what we're doing here is we're going to have this page variable that we're going to either we're going to set to the params page that we'll get from like the front end or we'll set it equal to one if we don't see it. And then what I can do here is I can do a property dot page method and then pass it that at page. Now the dot page method is something that that commonary gem gives us. <clears throat> All right, so let's look at this now. So let's refresh the cities. Let's select the city. Now notice when I select the city, I select Salt Lake. I don't have as much data. I don't have that little delay anymore as well, because I'm not trying to render so many cities anymore. Or sorry, it's so many properties. <clears throat> so let's look at what that did. If I go to um, my cities.js. Um, it's right here, set city properties. Let's console.log res.data right here. Just notice this length is 25. If I do like Ogden, it's 25. So what this is giving me back is, this is giving me back 25 entries by default. Cool. So, we want to set up some other stuff in our controller to kind of set up our pagination. So let's go back to our properties controller. So what I'm going to do, instead of rendering JSON like this, I'm going to do, it's going to set this to a variable called properties. Or wait, no, this, yeah, I guess that can be called properties. That's fine. And then I'm going to grab, I'm going to create another variable called total pages. Properties dot total pages. And then I'm going to render JSON. These two keys. So I'm going to do my properties, which is going to be equal to properties and a total pages key which will be equal to total pages. And then I'll also say this. Out total pages is also something that Commonary is gonna give us. So where am I getting this from? Well, that's from this gem. Because what this gem is doing is it's going to take a big query, like say if we get like a thousand records back, it's going to only send back 25 at a time, but then it's going to tell us how many pages we have. So that'll just be a thousand divided by 25. <clears throat> so if I do this, if I refresh, 
this is going to break my app, right? Because when I log res.data now, I have the properties key, which is my array and my total pages. Because I'm changing how I'm sending back my data. So that's going to break that. So I need to go to my cities.js. I no longer want to set city properties to res.data. I want to set that to res.data.properties. Because that's now how I'm sending back my properties. And then I'm also getting back, see how I now have this total pages? I have 20 pages for Draper. If I go to like Salt Lake, like Salt Lake has 18 pages. Cool. So we're gonna kind of make our own little version of this drop down right here. It's not going to be as clean, but let's just kind of do that. So if I have 20 pages, I'm going to want to have like a list of numbers right here, like one through 20. And then I could select one of those and then it will get me that page. So we're only like going to be showing 25 properties per page. <clears throat> But now I have the like the length of pages. So what I can do is in my cities, um, let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna call this total pages. And then set total pages. Actually, do I need that? No, let's, I don't know if I, actually, I don't think I need that in my state. What I do want is my current page. The set current page. <clears throat> and I could just default this to one. Because by default, you know, that current page should be one. So now I want to send that page data to my, actually, you know what? I do want total pages in state total. So I want my current page and yeah, let's go ahead and grab total page. Set the total pages. Set that to zero by default. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. So, so let's go ahead and inside of here, let's set total pages to res.data.total underscore pages. All right. Render city. So what I'm also going to do in my render city is this render city method. Let's do a pagination demo right here, and then let's do like a render pagination function.
this is actually one of the times where we actually kind of want a for loop. Because what I want to do is I want to render all my numbers one through the total pages. So this is, um, we kind of have to do what a map is doing here, but we need to do it with a for loop. So let me do this, um, create this pages array. And I'm going to do a for loop that. So I kind of want to count from one to the total pages. So I'm going to set I equal to one because that's what I want I to start out. I want to just start counting from one and I want to go as long as I is less than or equal to total pages. Because I want to, like if total pages is 20, I want to go all the way up to 20. And then I'm just going to do an I++. Plus plus. And then I'm going to do my pages dot push. I. And this function is going to return that pages array. So normally we do this with a map function because we already have the array and we map over the array and we create a new array. But with this one, I just have, I just want to create a list, like a count, one through total pages, throw those in a tag, JSX tag, and then return that array. So if I look at this, if I select the city, there you go, there's my pagination demo. So now I'm listing all the pages that I potentially have. Could, you know, make that, if I don't want those to all be a new line, I could turn this into a span. Maybe give this some style. Right, 10 pixels. Let's do five. Cool. So there's my little pagination right there. We could also do a on. Let's do this. Let's also say this current page, just so we can see this. We'll maybe add some styling, but for now, we'll just hard cut it. So our current page is one. But what I want to do on these spans is I want to add a on click. To set the total page. So my on click, I could go ahead and do, let's do this as a function. I want to do some stuff here. So on click, let's go ahead and so page. Click, pass it the page. Page clicked. And this will take our page. Now, and then for now, let's just set our current page to page. So 
So if I click 10, I'm, I now have this pagination set up. So if I click one of these, it's going to set that current page state. But actually what I want to do here is I want to do an Axios call. So I want to do an Axios call here to um, what am I thinking? I want to do an Axios here to get that pages data. So let's do our Axios call. kind of this one right here, this API. Cities value. Which means. So a couple things here, how, how I set this up. So my handle change, this is what gets clicked. When I. Um, you know, change my city. So now I'm just using the value from this, but I now need to do this axios call down here, but I don't have that value anymore because that only happens on the on click or on the select change. So I just need to hold, store that in some state. Let's call this selected city. So there I can set the selected city to value. Now I'm still gonna use the value here. Because I don't want to, um, I don't want to, because remember this set state is that's it's not going to set it before this is done. So I'm still going to use the value here, but I will select, I will set the selected city. Because then down here I can use it. But wait. So I can kind of just copy this right here. And here, well, I don't want to. Um, here, I'm not going to use the value. Here, I can use my selected city. But also what I want to do is I need to pass the page param because once I click the page, I want to send that now to my database. And if you remember with the URL, I can add a question mark at the end of my URL. And then I can send params like this. So here's my URL, but now I'm sending some extra parameters with this after this question mark. So I'm going to send a page parameter, which is going to be my page value. And I'm going to send a yo param, which is just going to be taco. So let's select the city. Draper, I go select 20. Did you see how those values did change? Let's see maybe one that like 
select so there's Salt Lake City I'll go to 18 those values are changing see the prices change in like the beds and bathroom show on that cool so let's look at kind of what's going on with the the back end just so we can kind of see this in action i go to my properties controller i'm just going to do a puts Do this so it's easy to see and then puts params. All right, so I go, let's go select Salt Lake City, go inspect my console. <clears throat> so there's my params. It's telling me my controller in action. And I also have that city param, what's I'm getting from my URL. When I, when I, start, not, well, it's not technically my URL, it's from when I do this on change. So that on change, that's sending the city. But when I actually go click one of my, pagination links, it's going to send the page and yo param. So let's go click like 18. Go back to my server. If I look at my params now, now I have that page 18. Then I also have that yo param, which is taco. I still have my city param, which is SLC. And so then what Caminari is gonna do, it's gonna grab that page. It's gonna set that page variable to that number that I sent. And then it's gonna grab us that pages section, the properties. So now if I have a lot of data, you know, getting 25 entries back, that's, that's gonna be quick. So you get like a nice, nicer, cleaner UI, or, or less glitchy. Which, you know, is, is nice if you're someone like Amazon or something, like, and you're like looking for stuff or you're something like Google. Like when you're Google and someone like searches for something, you don't wanna show all like 2 billion results. You wanna show like, you know, 25 or something or a hundred at a time. And that's what this is allowing us to do. <clears throat> but you kind of see, but there is a distinction. So with the available one, does it make sense how this pagination, like it already has the data. So it's just jot like, it's just JavaScript kind of managing this behind the scenes. But the, they're just, so there's can be an option where you maybe grab all the data, but you just choose not to show it all at once. With our cities, we're only getting 25 entries from the database. And when we click on one of these records, it has to do an API call to grab the data. Does that distinction make sense? So I'll ask, like, which one's better or does it matter? I think it, it's really kind of use case specific. Um, it's like, how, how much data are you loading? 
how bad is the glitch? How quick is it? Kind of what's your priority? Do you want all the data up front or do you want to, you know, just give them as, as needed? I think <clears throat> so just maybe something we could do just to maybe make this let's just try styling this just a tiny bit um, just for fun so something I could do here I think that would make this look a lot better is um, on that span on our style what we could do is I'm going to make this a little messy but probably would want to throw this in its own components this is going to get messy but um, you know we could do something like this let's try to do it Turinary here. Let's do border. Um, let's see. Let's um, let's see if I equals our current page. Question mark. I wonder if this is going to work one pixel solid red. Now we'll just leave it blank. I equal, equal, equal. No, it doesn't like that. I'm going to just throw this. Let's actually just throw this style in the function. Get style. I'm going to pass this I. All right, this might clean it up a little. Like I said, probably throwing this into its own component would be a cleaner way, but we're just kind of being a little quick about this. So get style. That's gonna take the page. So what I'm gonna say if page equal equals the current page, Go ahead and return. Let's do this. <clears throat> Let's do default style. Do a little Java, like some JavaScript here. So for the default style, we want to have like font size of, I don't know, like 20 pixels. We want that margin right of 10 pixels or five pixels. Cool. So if we have, um, if our page equals the current page, let's give it a default style. Let's just add the border to it, border bottom. Is that going to do it? 
It's such a weird way to do this, but. <clears throat> does not like that. Oh, get style equals I, what am I doing there? Okay. Still does not like that. Just trying to get this working. The style prop expects a mapping from style proper, not a string. <clears throat> Why does that think it's a string? What? The style prop expects a mapping from style property to values, not a string. All right, I guess it doesn't like me putting a function in there for some reason. Oh wait, this one I actually want, I know what I'm doing. I actually want to run this function. There we go, let's try this. Sweet. So let's return <clears throat> default style. Cool. So what was, what I was doing wrong here is I was wrapping this in a function. So that was returning a function, but really I want this function to run, to grab the style. And then let's try to get that current page so we can get the one, one pixel solid black <clears throat> and do maybe like color. Alt style dot color equals red. Cool. So now we have like this red styling and the border bottom. You could also do like probably a cursor. So now when I hover over that, I get um, the little finger pointer and then it's going to style it to show which one is active. Cool. So there's a little pagination demo. We could definitely spend more time, like maybe try getting some arrows to work. If we had arrows, we just like, if the right arrow was clicked, we would just change our current page plus one and do the Axios call. So we could spend a lot of time with the pagination. <clears throat> <clears throat> but that, um, yeah, there's a little demo with that. Any questions on this? I'm going to go ahead and push this up. So, um, just a heads up, today we are gonna continue working on this, your, your homework assignment. I know I told you yesterday, um, it might be due today at the start, but um, I'm gonna switch it to being due on first thing a class on Monday. 
So you can work on it today and this weekend if you would like. Um, Will Will was going to come by today and do uh, and go over the projects, but we're we're not going to do that until Monday. So Monday in the morning, he'll he'll present the your options for the portfolio projects, and then we'll assign you into groups. And then on Monday, you'll actually start working on your portfolio projects. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, with this homework, feel free to you know spend some more time on it. Maybe spend some more time on the UI. Um, Maybe try adding some pagination. Um, we'll kind of give you the weekend to experiment a little more with it. But yeah, are there are there any questions or anything? Not quite on pagination. I would like to sit for like five minutes after we end. I'm having a problem with something in semantic and I can't find any documentation on it. So I want to see if it's code or if it's just a little bug with semantic. Okay, yeah, we can look at that. Anything else? Yeah, if, if there's no questions, um, yeah, let's go ahead, hop off, and let's just come back. Let's just call it 150. Meet back at the TA channel. Cool. Thank you, James. Cool. And is that you, Dennis? Yeah, that was me. Cool. Do you want to share your screen? Take sure. Your so here I've um, commented out all the above code. So I'm just playing around with this one table here. Um, here, this is how it's functioning. So you've got this Chevron right, right here, right? Yeah. Um, and I've copied this code like multiple times and I can't seem to get that to render on my end of it where it comes as this weird like this. And the weird thing for me is that if I take my code that I have right now and I copy it and I bring it and I put it into, I put it into their little sandbox here, it'll render the way that I expect it to, but it won't on my end. Okay. So I put it there and it, see now it's there. Cool. All but right. I can't figure out why it's not on mine. Sweet. That's, okay. that, that, that's definitely helpful though. So. Um, on your end, what's what's the issue on your end? I can't, there's this little chevron right, this bar right here is messed up, whereas on theirs, it's not. Oh, okay. So, but it is, it is rendered. It is rendered, it's just not there. And I noticed that if I switch my colon here to three, whereas theirs, you know, it's on four, um, I can see it, but it's still in the wrong place. So I go here and let's see. Now it's over here in this table, but I can't get it to be. So what I did here is I switched it to three, right? The colon. If I do that on theirs, oops, it moves it over, but it, for some reason on mine, the arrow is in this column, if that makes sense. Over here, it's not part of it. All right. Uh, and the code is copy and pasted both directions. <clears throat> okay, this one's a weird one. So, so again, just to be like really, and this is why I was thought it was weird because it was working like yeah yesterday, but if I just delete this, so now it's a blank page. That should be blank page. Oh, you gotta save, right? Save this. Okay, so now I'm not rendering anything and I take. So get that one, I'm, but this one's broken, right? No, this one's working here. Oh, that's how you want it to look? Well, how's that? Well, I mean, okay, I mean, if I really wanted to be there, I would just switch this back to four. Okay, yeah. 
and now it's now it's there. Change this to product. I'm gonna be mad. See, it's not there. So let's it's, let's try. It was, you see where it's like messing up? Oh yeah, yeah, I totally see that. Um, let's see. Let's sit down. Um, what? So if you if you go back to your one on React and like. Does it do it if you open it up in like a new window? I wonder if like this, the split screen is. Still there. Okay. Um, go back to the code sandbox. Do they have this like, so this is the example.js to go to like scroll down. Go to like the index.js and scroll down. Um, where's the okay, scroll styling? What the heck? Um Throw your, so they're wrapping. So see, let's try this. So in your app.js or index.js. Yeah, no, so you go to your app.js. Let's, where you have your routes. So underneath your nav bar, wrap all of your routes in a container and see how they have a container style margin 20. Yeah. Do that. You just like that. I want me to. Yeah. Cool. Now. You need to import container from semantic. Cool. Let's see if that. Oops. Wait, where did my? Oh, I moved it. Oh. Right. So. Now it's way out here. Okay. But. So it's there. It's just not, it's just in the wrong spot. But okay. So I think when you. So when I did semantic, because remember that they're still having that, like where this, you can't import it here. Is that still not working? Yeah. So I did it through the HTML way that they described it. Where, uh, yeah. So I, I still did the, the link down here. Um, let me see that link. Which was working, because you know I have some semantic components, but this is what it said to do for their documentation. Well, you, yeah, can you, so it's the UI2. Okay, now go back to the code sandbox and to their index.js and scroll down. And then, yeah, that href, um, scroll over. I bet you you're just using a different 
version of the CSS. It has this at two here. Yeah, I, if take the href they're using, that, that HTTPS CDN. So I bet you it's just a, Wait, that's the wrong one. And throw the yeah, throw it with the link. Actually, that's this one here. Wait, what? So this this right here is right here. So there's this one and then the one above it, which just has this at two. There's only difference. Wait, um, let me see that whole thing. Is that other one? Here, let me just expand this. And then this is the code I just copied from. Yeah, those are those are different because one's a Java. You don't need the JavaScript one. This one. Yeah. So get rid of that one. See if getting rid of the JavaScript fixes it first. Just delete that. No. The JavaScript. Okay, yeah. So give it the other CDN. Oops. Okay. Still outside. I think you had like a little weird in there. That tilde or that quote. I mean, not that that would do anything. You have an extra quote in there. Do a um, do a command shift R. Here. Yeah. Just get rid. Just comment out that link. Now refresh. Now it's not gonna have any semantic at all. Yeah. All right, good, okay, cool. Now uncomment it out. Cause I mean, I would still think that like, I, where that, wherever that sandbox went. Yeah, right here, that I should be able, it should be, that that's so weird. Yeah, is that and that's from semantic UI, right? And this is yeah, directly what I just copy and pasted. And I get everything except for this little bar comes wherever that is. All right. So let's go back. They're using 2.0.4. Let's see what version of semantic you're you're using. So go to your package.json. 2.0.4. Um, yeah. Go to their pack. I don't know if they're going to have their CSS in there, but scroll back. See if you can see what version of CS. Well, I guess it doesn't even matter because they've got it 2.0.4 right here. Yeah. So you're thinking it's more of a bug or some kind of thing on the semantic side? Oh yeah, it's definitely a semantic issue. Um, or, or I mean, I was thinking it's like an issue of like, you're using a version. It's almost like your React version is maybe not up to date with your CSS 16. version. 16.8 React, I'm on 17. It's more, it's more, I don't, it's not that. I think it's the React and this, wait, go to your index.css. Index.css. Or sorry, .js. Import. Let's get rid of the importing the CSS, index.css. 
on line three, just delete that line. Do you have any other like styling on here? Um, I did, I did just um, styled components and semantic, but I don't think I, I don't think I'm using styled components. All right, so let's let's just go back. So let's go refresh. It's just yeah. Oh wait, is it there now? Yeah. Oh. So something in your was it when I did that that it changed? Yeah, it's it's something. It looks like it's something in your CSS. Was that doing it? Yeah, it's the CSS file. So yeah, go look at your index.css. I wonder what could be doing it inside of there. Comment that out, save, then it'll be where it's supposed to be. Okay. So then my index CSS, is it this div A maybe? Cause I- that's, Yeah, that's definitely- Maybe behind the scenes, it's this little margin, right? Yep. Which I had set up for my nav bar here. Yeah. Uh, that's probably doing it. <laughs> that explains it. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's a. So that means that behind the scenes, semantic is using an, an A inside a div, right? Yeah. So it's catching that and then it's applying this little 5% margin right to it, which is pushing it out over here. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Because that, yeah, I guess that's how those little CS things can catch each other. Funny. Yeah, for sure. So. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> cool. Have a good one.